Hi there. How are you? In today's episode, we will tackle the major groups of fishes. What are chordates? Chordates are animals under the phylum Chordata. Organisms under this phylum possess these various anatomical characteristics that appear all throughout, or part of their life cycle. The characteristics of the chordates include notochord, a dorsal nerve cord, pharyngeal slits, and postanal tail. Aside from that, they also exhibit bilateral symmetry, with coelom, metameric segmentation, and circulatory system. There are two major groups of fishes. The first one is the group of extinct fishes. Another one is the group of extant or living fishes. Much of the fossil material is represented only by fragments that are often impossible to identify to species, mainly because the osteology of extant relatives is poorly known. Imperfection of fossil records causes the delimitation and precise positioning difficult. Approximately, half a billion of fishes that lived on Earth have become extinct. There are four major groups of extinct fishes. They are the, class Cephalospides, class Teraspides or Teraspidomorphi, class Palacospondyli or Placodermi, and class Acanthidae. Dot. The class Cephalospides or Cephalaspidomorphi, first appeared in Silurian until Devonian period. They do not have jaws, possessed bony armor, and had a muscular feeding pump. Their head and anterior trunks are protected with continuous bony shield. Their skull is either mixed cartilage and bone or ossified throughout. They lived in both marine and freshwater environment. Examples are extinct osteotracans and anaspids. Class Teraspides or Teraspidomorphi, have armored head shields. Their head and anterior trunk are covered with solid bone without true bone cells. They don't have external and nasal apertures, and an internal one opens into the mouth cavity. They lived in both marine and freshwater environment. Examples are the heterostracans and thalodonts. Class Palacospondyli or Placodermi, are early jawed fishes, that arose in the Silurian, but disappeared in early Carboniferous. They left no apparent modern descendants. Their body is naked, with bony, ornamented and plate-like skin. They are considered as predators and achieved monstrous size. Examples are the Placoderms. Classic Anthidiae, are the earliest advanced true jawed fishes. They have true bone occurring in the endoskeleton and also as dermal bones. Examples are the Acanthidians. There are two categories of living fishes. The Agnathus, or the jawless fishes. And the Gnathostomatus, or jawed fishes. Agnathans include the class Mixini, or hagfishes, and class Cephalaspidomorphi, or lampreys. On the other hand, Gnathostomatus include the classes Chondrichthyes or Elasmobranchs, and the Osteichthyes or bony fishes. Class Mixini includes the living hagfishes or slime eels. They are the most primitive and oldest vertebrate, during the Ordovician period, about 500 million years ago. They lived in temperate marine environment. Their structure include having no paired fins, and the main axial skeleton or vertebrae is cartilaginous. The gill openings to surface have pores, not slits on sides, and no gill arches for the support and protection of gills. They also have one median nostril and fed by suction using muscular mouth with rows of teeth. The body cylindrical and elongated like eels, with about 43 species that occurred today. Most species of this class are anadromous, migrating from marine to freshwater. Some are blind, but adults have functional eyes. They do not have teeth, scales, paired fins, and jaws. They only have one nostril, and parasitic on other vertebrates, and sometimes are scavongers. There are about 41 species in temperate freshwater environment. Examples are the living lampreys. Organisms under class Chondichthys are also called as elasmobranchs or chondrichthians. They have cartilaginous skeleton, meaning they do not have true bone in the skeleton. They with movable jaws armed with well-developed teeth and inferior mouth. They have pectoral fins for swimming, a and rough sandpaper-like skin called placoid scales. Males have claspers, while females have cloaca. O a copulatory organ used for mating. No swim bladder, but maintain buoyancy with large liver full of oil, i.e. shark's oil. There are two subclasses under this class, the elasma branchiae, and the holocephaly. Under the subclass Salacea are the sharks. This group existed 100 million years ago, and have not changed much, the reason why they are known as the living fossil. 
they have torpedo body shape for fast swimming. Most species are pelagic, but some are benthic. They have eyelids, and can also close their eyes like us humans. They have placoid scales, a powerful heterocircle caudal fin, two dorsal fins, and paired pectoral fins. There are five to seven gill slits in each side. They have interesting teeth which near overlapping with lost ones easily replaced by new ones. Salacians are predatory. They also have slow growth, low fecundity, but high exploitation rate. They live primarily in marine environment, but some are Eurohalan, and only few migrates to tropical freshwater. Indo-West Pacific is richest shark area. They are in dead for meat, liver, fins, skin. Subclass Bataidae are the group of rays and raji forms. They have depressed body, five pairs of gill slits, and pectoral fins expanded like wings, which are fused with head. They're yes on top of the head, but are vestigial in some species. They small placoid scales, but lacking in some species. Stingrays have stinging spines at whip-like tail. Other species some can produce electrical voltage. Bataideans are mostly demersal, marine species, but some are confined in freshwater. Many form social groups, some are migratory, and are predatory in nature. They are hunted as food. The subclass Holocephalae is the group of chimeras and ratfishes. They have compressed body, four pairs of gills slits, and prominent large eyes. Their mouth is small and inferior, with their teeth protruding from the mouth. Their pectoral fins are broad and leaf-shaped, and have two dorsal fins. They do not have anal fin, scales, spiracle and cloaca. Their tail is elongated and tapering, with heterocircal caudal fin. Females are generally larger than males, with males having claspers for copulation. The next class is Osteichthyes. This group is also known as the bony fishes, having true bones or calcified skeleton. The teeth are fused to the bones, and the soft ray fins are usually segmented. There is a presence of paired fins, nostrils, swim bladder, or even functional lungs in some species. There are four known subclasses in the class Osteichthyes. They are the subclasses Dipnoi, Crossoptergii, Brachyoptergii, and Actinoptergii. Subclass Dipnoi have paired fins with a pronounced lobate, fleshy, and scaled base. They have primitive characteristics, such as the ability to breathe atmospheric oxygen, and the presence of lobed fins. They are found in Africa, South America, and Australia. Subclass Dipnoi include the Australian lungfish and the African lungfish. Subclass Crossopterygii are tassel fin fishes with two dorsal fins. They have paired lobate fins. Their body also has cosmoid scales. The once thought extinct colocants are the example of fish under this subclass. Species under subclass Brachyopterygii primarily are temperate species. They have rhombiganoid scales, with the presence of spiracles. Their lungs are partially used in respiration. Subclass Actinopterygii is the group of ray fin fishes. Most of the species have scales, while some are naked. They do not have spiracles, cloaca and claspers. The nostrils are high up on head. They are widely distributed, found in all bodies of water, in temperate and tropical regions. This subclass includes the Sturgeon fishes Paddle fishes Eels, and marais Needle fishes Sardines and herrings Carps and minnows The perch-like fishes the salmons, the catfishes, the pipefishes, and the seahorses, and the pufferfishes, and filefishes. That's it. That's all information I can share for this episode. See you again in the next Fishy Matters episodes. Bye bye.